YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop and another project video. Today we're going to be doing some upgrades on the jet scooter. If you haven't had a chance to watch the video on putting an RC jet on a Razor scooter, it's a pretty cool video. Went through a lot of machining for the parts on that. But where we ended up on that video is just hanging the transmitter off of the handlebars. Really hard to operate the throttle. And also as we ran it a little bit more, notice there was an issue with hitting your foot on the little windscreen that goes on the intake on that jet. And also now that we've got a different throttle setup on it and a different transmitter, needed to make a better mount for that instead of just trying to zip strip that onto the handlebars. So bottom line is jet scooter is in here for some upgrades. We're gonna put a little roll cage around the jet to protect that. We're gonna make a custom throttle to get that up on the handlebars and also add an automatic shutoff for that. And we're gonna mount this new transmitter on the handlebars in some pretty cool way. So we'll be able to use this uh, Tormach 1100MX to uh, make a couple of these parts, especially the throttle. Pretty complex part that I've got with that. I'll show you the design on the computer and also show you how I use the, the picture function to trace around and get some of those parts into Fusion uh, really quick. Just super impressed with the accuracy of trying to pull a picture into Fusion 360. So I'll show you that real quick. And like I say, we'll incorporate this Tormach to make a couple of these parts and we'll get some of these upgrades done. For those of you subscribed to the channel, I sure appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, now would be a great time. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and you'll know exactly when the next video comes out. But for right now, let's turn this around and first off, we'll take a quick look at the roll cage around the jet and then we're gonna jump on the computer. I'll show you a little bit of the design I have in mind for this throttle and then we'll get making some parts. So let's go. And there's our roll cage upgrade. Needed something a little around that jet to keep from kicking that screen off. So we got that done yesterday. I didn't go through and record the whole process of making those parts, but essentially just took some one and a quarter inch wide by one eighth aluminum strips and found a variety of different things around the shop to use to bend those around to get those smooth curves. Ended up using the hand wheel on my lathe. That was a pretty nice shape and a good diameter to get some of those curves. Also used the column on my vertical mill drill that had a pretty good diameter for some of those curves. And when I needed some tighter bends, I uh, ended up using the live center in my tailstock on my lathe. That worked pretty well. So just find some good solid rounded surface and you can get in there and bend those curves. Just kind of fit them together until you get them the shape that you want. Pretty happy with how that turned out and attaching that cross piece on there so that you're not kicking it from the side. So after we got the roll cage complete, then the next step was to make some hoops to hold that transmitter. So I went with a similar design to what I did to hold that little control panel up on the top handlebars. Just used some two inch aluminum, turned these pieces, turned one three quarters of an inch wide, and then just took it over to the bandsaw, cut it in half, faced off these pieces. And I quickly came up here into Fusion and drew up a quick design of that so that I could drill and tap these holes on the Tormach. Pretty easy, quick Fusion design to do that. Also came Came down here and designed the plate so that same thing I could uh, just cut some quarter inch pieces of aluminum grab those in the vise really quick and I just laid out where these holes needed to be to drill counter bore and then drill and tap this hole through there so let's go take a look at how these parts turned out well the parts turned out fine the Tormach made short work of going in there and drilling and tapping those holes in the half rounds as well as drilling counter boring and then drilling and tapping the holes in those quarter inch plates first venture into rigid tapping with the Tormach and it did fabulous uh, the issue is that those half rounds being a larger diameter on the stem than the handlebars it just really didn't look that good they're only coming halfway around that larger diameter the bolts to go through and connect the plates needed to be so long and such thin bolts that it just really didn't look good so we had to go back and design something a little different so back up to Fusion, I went and went into a different design. Instead of those half rounds, went with these full U-shaped brackets. That meant I couldn't start with the round stock like I did before. So started with just a block of aluminum, set these up so they were facing each other to try to make it uh, pretty efficient to machine these, and went down into the cam side this now for the manufacturing side. Got into the first setup, and you can see I had a pretty large piece of aluminum that I started with, so I just set it up to face that off. and. 
after that was faced, then I cut the block in the bandsaw, got to a shorter piece, went in there with some adaptive roughing and adaptive pocket clearing to clean those up, and then ultimately flipped that over, got rid of some of our excess material by facing that off the bottom, and then went in there with our setup to uh, to get these drilled and tapped. Those set that up on the end, drilled those, and again did some rigid tapping to just get those started nice and straight and square, and then ended up uh, finishing those off by hand in the vise. So for this one, I did record making these with the Tormach, so let's go down and take a look at these being machined. So this is an aluminum from an old heat sink. I'm pretty sure it's 6061 aluminum. Machine's really nice. Tried to have uh, some pretty decent speeds and feeds on here and uh, holding off a, a decent chip load. Blood coolant did a pretty good job of keeping the chips cleared out most of the time. There was a couple times on that big inside pocket where you can see the chips build up a little bit. Uh, every once in a while I had to open the door and shoot some air in there just to blow that out a little bit to make sure that I was keeping it clear. But overall, uh, machined really, really well. Don't remember exactly what the cycle time was on this, but uh, it was fairly quick. Definitely a lot faster than I could manually machine anything with that kind of a shape to it. And uh, it was just pretty cool to watch. This was the reason we got this Tormach is to be able to do some of these crazy shapes that I just can't do manually. And uh, just really happy with how it works and adds a whole new level of versatility to the shop to be able to make some of these parts. So this is how the pieces came out. We'll take a closer look at them here pretty soon. We're just about wrapping up this cycle and be able to uh, take a look at how these finished out and what they looked like before we faced off the bottom side. There they are. That's a mess of chips. Then it was time to flip it over and face off all that excess on the back side. Was being a little conservative, I wasn't taking off big cuts here even though it was aluminum and I really wasn't sure how it was going to react when I broke through. Obviously I'm just holding the U-shaped brackets now in the vise and getting rid of all this excess on the back side. So as we finish up these cuts, you're going to see when I go to jump ahead here, we're going to skip to where I'm just breaking through and gets a little interesting here as it uh, grabs a hold of that piece and basically just folds it up. Glad I was learning how that was going to react while I was doing some aluminum instead of uh, doing some steel. I'm sure there's a better way to have cut through that and done that piece, but um, you know I'll have to learn that and figure that out for in the future. But it did work. Cutter was fine. Those big chunks of aluminum just get cut through and pushed out of the way, and uh, the parts turned out perfectly. So. Again, not exactly what I was hoping would happen there on that finish cut, but it did do what it was supposed to and get rid of that material, and we ended up with two completed parts when it's all done. Sounds horrible, but it was actually cutting pretty decent the whole time. Well, not exactly what it has going for there, but hey, it got rid of it. Well, the finished product is good, but apparently this little thin stuff just really did not want to be cut, so just kind of shoved out of the way. But we ended up with some clean looking parts. Let's get those drilled and tapped. All right, now we're getting this drilled and tapped. and rigid tapping that 440. I'm still not super brave. I only went 3 
28, seven inch deep. I didn't go in there the full inch, it's a blind hole, but that's plenty to get me started and I can just finish tapping those a little bit by hand. And that's an op. Cycle is done. Well, and there they are mounted for this scooter upgrade. That's where that new transmitter is gonna mount in there. And we'll get the wire coming out of that for this throttle. So there is upgrade number two complete. Time to move to the throttle. So back up to Fusion and let's take a look at how I designed this throttle. So I had a rough idea what I was gonna do. I was gonna use two of those aluminum donuts, starting with that two inch aluminum, bore those out so that they fit over the handlebars. And that was what I was gonna use to sandwich this potentiometer in this component to run the throttle. So this is actually just the trigger out of like a car transmitter for an RC car. So I knew this was going to run the servos correctly. So that was the original design. So I just took a picture of this with my phone and really love this about Fusion. If you take a picture and you go up here to the calibrate section, you can just put two marks across your picture, put in a dimension and hit enter and it changes the dimension of the entire sketch. And I tell you what, it was super accurate. Um, I used those dimensions. I used this picture to come up with the hole placing, to come up with this center where the potentiometer was gonna be and use that to really design all my other parts. So what do I mean by that? So first I took and I sketched and I traced around this piece right here. I knew that I was going to hacksaw across to get rid of the bottom half of this plastic that I didn't need. So I was gonna cut just below the holes. So that looked something like this. I created this piece right here to start with. And let me turn that picture off. So I created this part, extruded that out. So now I had a three dimension chunk of what I needed. And then I went into the actual donut piece that I was going to use. And then I extruded through that so that I knew what I needed to cut away. Created another slot where the wires were going to need to run out behind that. Another slot for the wires to get out. Pretty much had created this piece, but I also needed to come up with the actual throttle mechanism. I wanted to understand and where this was gonna move. So if I turn that sketch back on, you can see that again, I just traced around that to come up with what that piece looked like. And now I was able to put this together and actually move this and get a sense of, all right, how far can I move that before it's gonna run into my clamp? How far this way? How much do I wanna cut off of this before I add on this thumb knob? And then after I add the thumb knob, how much is that gonna let me move this around? So all of this from tracing around that picture, creating these donuts, super easy easy infusion, but those other parts, a little bit uh, harder to do, so much easier to do by tracing around that picture. And then for the last piece, made the other half where this has some additional plastic that comes out this side of that pivot. That's gonna go through this hole, have some clearance in here for that to move get a sense of what that looks like. I didn't build on the rest of this plastic here, so that I didn't uh, include in the model, but that is gonna go through that hole. And again, I just used the picture. I used the center of that potentiometer to determine where to put this hole on this side and to line all that up. And this slot is gonna be a spring groove where the return spring is gonna run to be able to bring this back when you're at low throttle. So originally I had the groove on the wrong side. You'll see that when we go down and cut it. So I cut the spring groove, didn't have it in the right place, came up and remodified it, put it back in the machine, which good test of the repeatability. We'll get to see that here in a minute when we head down there. Uh, but that was essentially it. So this was how I designed these parts for the throttle. And let's go take a quick look at the manufacturer side of this. Take a look at the couple of setups to get these created. So right now, if we look at setup number one, I'm gonna go through and do some adaptive roughing to get rid of most of that material and then go through and do the finish cut on that pocket and finish all the way around for this spring groove. So the reason that wasn't part of the adaptive is again, I had already cut this halfway and just came back and had to finish that out. Uh, so that's how we machined out that part and we'll get the other one turned back on now. So for this other piece, same thing. We just did some adaptive roughing, clean out that slot, did a couple of two dimensional slots in there or pockets, did a finish cut around all that and then cleaned out this slot where the wires are going to go and then drilled the holes for these 250 six screws where we're actually going to screw and mount that potentiometer in place. Uh, I needed to make sure that a potentiometer stayed on plastic, not aluminum. Didn't want it touching metal and conducting where it's not supposed to. So that's why I used all those original plastic pieces. Just knew that that was going to work from the original design of the transmitter. So tried to copy and keep as many of those parts as I could while coming up with uh, an actual device to hold it on the handlebars. So let's head back to the Tormach and let's take a look at how this machined out. 
All right, here's a little different setup on this part. I needed to hold something round. I don't have any V-blocks, so I took my three-jaw chuck off my dividing head, clamped that in there, and I did throw a dial across the top of that to make sure that it was holding it in there nice and square. So we're gonna go ahead and notch this piece out. Made pretty short work at that. Cut all those cool notches out of there. Let's get the other half done. All right, so I am pretty impressed with that trace feature in Fusion. There is the piece of plastic that I started with. So then I took the hacksaw, I cut off this little piece. That's what we just notched out for. And, I mean, that is an amazing fit into that notch that we just cut. Considering I just traced around it, trying to line it up by eye, we've got our holes tapped in there. So put a couple screws in and there's the pot that's gonna go back on the back side of this. So yeah, for just tracing dimensions around a picture that I import into Fusion, very happy with that fit. Got enough room for the wires to get out from under there. Good to go. All right, here's the second half of this throttle piece. A little bit thicker, just cutting some more notches and drilling one hole in there. Let's get this one knocked out. There's this second part. Got some grooves cut in there. That's gonna be a groove for the spring to run in. Let's go see how they fit together. All right, well, I missed some geometry. I got my spring groove actually on the wrong side. I needed that to be over here. So I'm just gonna cut that all the way around. And I need some extra relief up in here. I'm not gonna redrill the hole. I'm gonna use this x-axis line right here to that's where I had it lined up that was right on the x-axis so that should get me close enough we're not redrilling the hole this groove goes all the way around so it should line up pretty darn close to the start on that and we'll dig out that pocket and if we're just a hair off it's gonna be all right so ended up I was able to use the little bit of the chuck marks that you can see on the part to orient it lined it up and man it was spot on could just barely feel it ticking a little bit on the finish cuts. We got this groove all the way around now so we can put the spring wherever we want and we should have some relief down in that hole. Here's that throttle complete. We still need to add a emergency safety shutoff for that throttle so that's the next step to work on here. All right, here's the last step in the scooter upgrades, an emergency shutoff. So you put this around your wrist and that puts it into shut off mode nice little safety stop this thing is ready to go all right well here we are with our upgrades on here we got our throttle upgrade we got our transmitter upgrade so there's our roll cage upgrade ready to run let's do it so he set up a good pre-flight checklist now to get this ready. There's a couple of switches. You get the transmitter on, a couple of switches down on the side of that case. And then now it's going to start with just by putting the throttle forward and you bring that back to a certain spot. But the way we've got that set up with the automatic shutoff now, it goes back into idle mode. So in order to get it into the start sequence, it actually needs to come just a little bit below where that idle is. So we figured out you just have to pull off the emergency, shut off, let it go down into that spot to initiate the start sequence, and then you can put that back in, put the shut off safety tab back in place, and uh, then it'll just kick off right into the start sequence, and you will hear that jet starting to kick off. Of course, you got to make sure the fuel is open, so we remembered that and got it opened up, and now you'll hear it start to initiate the start sequence on that jet.
still didn't go in the door. Oh, we had a restart. Yeah. They're cooling. Need help? Oh, it says temp high here. Look at here. It's cooling. How high is the temp? It was at 120. Oh, so it's down that's under not now. bad. Yeah, it's at 88 now. Oh, it's in yep, prime, prime vape. vape. You're about to go. There, it's cooling. You looked like you were hauling. It felt like I was hauling. Felt plenty fast enough for me on top of that thing, I can tell you that. We had the GPS tracked it at 23 miles per hour. But coming back, I kind of backed out of it. So yeah, that's know. why I saw it. That's why I was looking at. Yeah. It looked like, looked like you were moving on that thing. Yeah. So I could tell though when you were coming back you were gaining speed. I saw you get out of it right before the dip. I was like, is he gonna run right? Is he gonna jump it? <laughs> yeah. Shoot, Let's man, see how... that is. But... Oh my gosh, that is so much better to ride now. That... Yeah. Now that you got some control. Okay, something's not reading right, I don't think. So you hit, I don't know, does that say max right there? I can't read that. Yeah, max 2A, 22.2 .2 miles per hour. Yeah. I think it's got more. Yeah, felt like faster than that, but hey. Yeah, but hey, that's a safe speed anyway. Uh, Gotta check out the night glow on this jet before we wrap up this video. <laughs>
Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another project video here in the Blades to Be Shop. I hope you enjoyed watching us as we went through, put some upgrades on this scooter. That throttle, I am super happy with how that came out. I knew I wanted to put an automatic shutoff on there, and uh, my plan was to use a zip strip, but really thought I was going to be going in from the side. So really happy with how that came together with that extra plate on there. And I think that roll cage around the jet does a great job of keeping you from hitting it with your foot. And that new mini transmitter mounted on the handlebars, I mean, pretty sleek looking. I do think that that is a good finished product now with those upgrades on there. Customer's super happy about it, and hey, that's what we're going for. So again, appreciate you watching. Those of you subscribed to the channel, keeping up with these videos, thank you so much for doing that. If you're new to the channel, haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, now's a great time. You're gonna wanna make sure you see the next video that comes out as we start making some knife parts. So until then, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. We're going to be here in the Blades to Be shop working on the next video and can't wait to get that out for you. We'll see you then. Take care.